Rocket Twin, Raya 3! Giant motorcycles dropped us off in my garage this morning, and I'm waiting for Lance to come by. He's the uh, Triumph guy to do the, the talk, you know. And I think, oh, let's take it out for a ride for us, see how we like it. And uh, why well, I like it a lot, really comfortable. Engine throws a little heat, but not enough to be annoying in the summer. And all kinds of torque. What's it, 160 foot pounds, something like that? I'll ask him when he gets here. But it's a very comfortable riding to do. I'm just so tired of, you know, I can't do the cafe thing anymore. I love cafe bikes, I like the look of them, but I'm just hunched over so, so much. My back's killing me after 20 minutes. This is a nice, relaxed riding position. Just the right height. Any higher would be too high, any lower would be too low. This is one of the great Sunday morning bike ride bikes, you know? Plenty of torque, plenty of power. 2.5 liter engine, the biggest, I think it's the biggest motorcycle engine in production, if I'm not, not mistaken. Harley's got some big twins, but they're not 2.5 liter. This, of course, three cylinders, four valve, 160 horsepower, a lot of torque. Pulls really strong. It looks like a big bike. Once you're on it, the boy, it's pretty maneuverable. It's pretty light. It, it, it carries its weight down low, so it's not too bad. I am so glad that Triumph's a success, you know. A lot of times they bring back brands that were big in the heyday, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and, and they never quite capture it, you know. But John Bloor, he's really done just a great job. You know, one of my favorite Triumphs, I've got a, a 64, the Triumph Bonneville and uh, lightweight handles, just a fun bike to, to ride. And much like the way Porsche has sort of kept it going, you know, kept the classic Porsche handling with modern upgrades, Triumph has done the same thing. My 66, a uh, 64 rather, is just a, uh, what is it about, 45 horsepower or something like that, but it's more than enough. This is three times the power and a little bit more weight, but not a whole lot more, not enough to uh, to slow it down. I mean, this thing just pulls really hard. You know, the most amazing thing about modern bikes are the rear view mirrors. I remember the old days of Triumph. If you got above uh, 3,000 RPM, you'd look in that rear view mirror and you just, you couldn't see anything. It would just be vibrating or blurry. This is, I mean, beautiful clear all the way through the rev range. You don't get any vibrations at all. And this is such a strong motor. I mean, it's not like a, a big four which revs to 13,000 RPM. That's not the idea behind it. It's just torquey, so it pulls down from low and really hard. I can't emphasize enough how comfortable this bike is. You know, all times you get a big cruiser. I don't really like those either with the foot forward thing and all of that and, you know, the saddlebags, the big windshield. And, you know, I just don't like that. To me, this is really comfortable, and you've got the wind in your face, which I kind of like a little bit, and uh, it just handles very nicely. Just, boy. I'm so used to driving vintage bikes with barely any brakes, no traction control, no ABS, none of that. Of course, modern bikes like this have all that stuff, and it's such an unusual engine configuration, three cylinders in line. Very stable motorcycle. You know, this is just about the perfect compromise. You want the power of a sport bike, but you want the comfort of a cruiser, but you're not a cruiser guy, and maybe you're, maybe you're uh, not quite good enough you know, for those 200 horsepower sport bikes, where you just got all the torque and all the power down where you need it. Man, it's, it's really nice. It's great to see the English companies making such an impressive comeback, you know. England was the motorcycle capital of the world for so many years, and then they just got their butts kicked by the Japanese and everybody else. And, and now they're back, you know. Well, they've been back for a long time, obviously. Triumph has been hugely successful. You know, I remember the old days, it would just be a bunch of stickers and paint jobs and Silver Jubilee model and all that kind of stuff. Whereas, I mean, now they're a real engineering company. They're building real motorcycles. And this is, this is very impressive. Once you got a bike that doesn't sound like anything else on the road, those three cylinders are really distinctive. 
Once again, the Maras couldn't be more impressive. That's probably the greatest safety feature on a motorcycle, you know? You're on some bike that's vibrating, and you look in your mirror and you can't make out what's behind you. Whereas these are, they're big, they're not intrusive. They cover the whole area behind you. You can see where you're going and who's coming up on you. Man, it's so nice to ride a motorcycle that stops. I mean, I love my 31 Indian Chief, but I'm sorry, when you come to a red light, I'm so sorry, excuse me, you're just, just, you're just going through lights. Yeah, uh, I mean, to have something that actually stops, yeah, that's impressive. One cylinder, not enough, four too many, don't like a twin, try a three. I like the way they tuck the exhaust in here. It's nice. It doesn't throw any heat onto your leg. One of the disadvantages of the big air-cooled bikes is, of course, in the summer it just throws such a tremendous amount of heat, whereas this, not bad at all. Let's head back to the garage. We'll see if Lance is there yet. Very nice. Uh. Lance, how you been? Pleasure, man. I'm, I've been doing all right. Had the bike out here before you did, so I thought we'd take it for a ride. Yeah, I think that was a great idea. No, it's great. It's very nice. So out there, um, I guess my question to you is, yeah. within the first couple miles, what were some takeaways that you got from it? Well, you know, it's funny. I, I'm always a sucker for the cafe bike. Mm. And I got on after 20 minutes, my back is killing me. I'm an old guy now, you know? And I realized that's exactly what I need. The riding position is perfect. When I take my old Vincent's out and stuff, it's that sit up and beg kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not so much a GT guy, because this has a forward. Uh, the forward pegs always psych me out. I feel like when they go into a corner with my feet, I always feel weird. I mean, that's exactly perfect. Exactly the right height. The bar is not too high, it's not too low. It's a great riding position. And we were out for about an hour, and it's perfectly comfortable. I don't get off and go, ah, mm. oh man, my arm is sore, you know? Oh yeah, I, I mean, I think one of the, the great parts about both of these bikes is just the ability to kind of suit the riding position to, to the actual rider. And me at 6'6", it's helpful because those pegs go down about 0.6 inches. Yeah. And right here on the GT, we can move them forward one inch and then back to the original position and then back another inch. So yeah. a lot of flexibility there. Nobody else has got a three, I don't think, do they? Are there any threes uh, out there? Uh, I come you to, know, if I they mean, do, we're not worried Japanese about them. Japanese had a few in this, uh, <laughs> they had a Yamaha or whatever. And I used to remember the Trident, the Triumph Trident. That's right, 6875. Yeah, which was just a twin with an extra cylinder stuck on it. You know, it's kind of weird. Uh, but it was nice. It was a nice bike. I love what Triumph has done, you know. I, I like the fact that they, you know, for a long time in the 70s, it was all a paint and sticker package, a silver jubilee. It's the hmm. same. They kept making the same bike. It took them a long time to get a disc brake in the front and the back, you know. And now they're truly modern motorcycles that compete with anything else in the world, you know. I mean, it, it's impressive to see the British motorcycle industry come back because that's what I grew up on, you know, mm. British bikes and then the Japanese come just obliterated the whole thing, <laughs> you know. And then they came back, John Bloor and those guys took the company, built bikes oil tight, really impressive package. And 160 horsepower, as I was saying during the drive, is perfect because I've got bikes with 210 horse and stuff. I'm not, I'm not good enough to make them do. So, so how about 165, because that's what we got. 165 <laughs> is great. I mean, it pulls hard, there's plenty of power. It's impressive. I, I, I was cursing the tachometer until you showed me I could change the screen. Absolutely. Because when I got here, I, just the key was in it, and I figured I'd go for a ride, so, which is stupid. You should read the manual before you go for a ride. And the tach has got this little tiny, I'm going, what the, what, yeah. was that eight thousand? Ah! You know, I, 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 <laughs> but, but you told me you could put the tach center stage, which, uh. which is nice. You know, it's, it's impressive, and it carries its weight well. You know, we did a lot of work on this bike. Uh, not only have we dropped just under 90 pounds from the bike itself, uh, we've taken out about 40 pounds from the engine. So, you know, consider moving about 40 pounds from in between your legs and just, you know, save the Merton Burl jokes 
for another time. That's right. But, uh, <laughs> and believe me, I know what it's like to have 40. All right, never mind. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. And, um, and so across Shaft Drive. That's right, absolutely. I and mean, so you've got virtually a maintenance-free bike, pretty much. And I like how they've cleaned up. You know, the first three cylinders that they did had that kind of Ferguson tractor look to it. It wasn't an attractive engine to look at. Triumph engines are always beautiful to look yeah. at, and that twin, you know. And when it first came out, it was like, okay. I mean, it was all right, you know. Uh, but this, they've narrowed it, they brought it in tighter. I like what they've done with the exhaust. It's not throwing a, a huge amount of heat. I'm not burning my leg off on the thing anymore. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I, had, I had the wonderful opportunity to ride both of these bikes at length, and that was something that I noticed and was really happy about. Um, you know, if you're a rider and you spend any sort of time on the bike, the last thing you want is just to have one side, in this case, of your leg just right. to a crisp. And here we did a really good job of heat shielding. Yeah, it's uh, really good. It's you know. really good. And like I say, I can put my feet on the ground because it's not what a bike weighs, it's how you can balance it. Mm. You know, if you got high weight, even 100 pounds less, whoa, whoa, you, you're doing that. Whereas this, it's all down low. It, it's very nice. It's, uh, it's impressive. And it's different. I like the fact that Triumph doesn't just make the same, a different version of the same bike. They got, you know, they got the twins, and then they got this, which is a totally, probably different market too, different crowd. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you, you're, you find a little bit of crossover. I'll say yeah. that, uh, only speaking for myself, uh, I own a Bonneville T120 and a Tiger 800. Right. Um, different strokes, obviously, you've got the parallel twin, and you have the triple right there. But I've got a Bonnie, I yeah. love my Bonnie. I've got a it's lot of early ride. Triumphs, 64 Bonnie, 70 Bonnie. Uh, I've got a Thunderbird, uh, and then I've got a modern Bonneville, which, when I ride it, people go, Hey, what year is that? When did you, when did you restore it? They go, no, no, it's a, it's a brand new one. <laughs> but, but it's got that retro look. Even got the fake amels on it, you know, all that yeah, kind of stuff. With all, which the, I all like. the most technology, too, which makes and it definitely this, cooler. And this, for somebody who feels they have to have the biggest engine ever put in a motorcycle, which is what it is, I think. This two is point, what it is. 2.5 liter. That's right. I mean, don't say Boss Hoss with the Chevy V8. <laughs> that doesn't count. I mean, this uh, yeah. specific motorcycle engine is still the biggest. I mean, the Harley V twins are big, but they're not 2.5 liters, you know. So. Yeah, and I like to think ours are a little more free flowing, rev a little bit better. You know, I think it's just a very versatile engine. I mean, down low, uh, the torque, I don't know if you felt it, but it kind of, you know, from jump, it kind of moves the earth underneath you. And then the horsepower kind of You know, it's so funny, in. riding American stuff most of my life, cars and bikes. Like, I've got my little Honda over there, my 64. Mm. That's a 600cc engine, and it revs to 9,500. And when. They came out with the new Honda, the 2000S. That had like a 9,000 RPM red light. And they found Americans were short shifting all the time because, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to hurt it by over revving. It's supposed to rev. It's, yeah. it's hard to get that American mindset out of your head, you know? And you don't almost don't really need a tie, attack in this bike because you open it at anywhere and the, that tremendous flood of torque comes through and just carries the bike. You know, a lot of bikes, you've got to get up above seven grand, you know, to, to get the real pull. What is this that pulls from, I mean, the torque curve is pretty flat all the way through, it's, isn't it? It's really flat. You're hitting the yeah. peak right around 4,000 RPM. Right, right. And you try and, try and keep that mid-range uh, right there for you to take advantage of. Yeah, yeah, no, very, very nice. And, and the GT is different how, I could use the heated grips, <laughs> couldn't use those today. Yeah, that's right. Uh, GT, a couple small differences. Uh, we have the, the seat height. Uh, the R, you're looking at about 30.4 inches off the ground. Right. You're looking at about 29.5 inches, okay. so a little more accessible that way. You have these wonderful swept back handlebars, wonderful for some people. Um, yeah, it's a, yeah, see, that's a little too swept back, and I don't like all the way forward. Explain this ignition. What's the need of this? Ignition yeah, well, I mean, essentially, on. it's just uh, you know another kind of level just another of kill switch. yeah, another level of control, another level of protection. If somebody rolls up on the bike, maybe has their key, not familiar with it, bike doesn't turn on. If that switch is not on, you, right. know, you get plenty of calls of folks who say, oh, "What's going on with the bike? Well, have you tried the ignition switch?" Right. Right. Similarly, uh, we have uh, our special electric key here, which you can turn on off and on with a button. Oh, okay. So well, let me you, give you the key to this before yeah, I walk no, off with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, so if this is on, on, and I walk away from the bike, I'm not drawing power, right? No, no okay. yeah, exactly. So you're, you're in good shape. You don't have to worry about that. Um, and uh, kind of similarly, other differences between the R and the GT, you're gonna get this seat rest right here for your passenger. Right. Um, seats crafted a little differently, just in keeping with the, you know, kind of cruising versus roadster theme. Uh, and, you know, it's just, you get this windscreen stock as well, which is available for fit on the R. I like, I, I like the R, I just like that better. I just like the seating position. It's perfect for me. I mean, it's perfect. I'm just a hair under six feet, so 
it, oh, all right, find my leg. I'm not, I'm not doing this <laughs> all the time, and I'm not doing that all the time. No, it, it was, it was really a nice riding bike. You know, I always get bikes I like the look of more than I like. Like I, I keep buying these cafe bikes that are like this all the time, and I, I ride for an hour, and I'm. Whereas this, I could just ride all day. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's it's impressive. It's impressive. Absolutely. I mean, the fender treatment is unusual. That's interesting. Subjective, right? We all love right. the looks. Some do Massive some tire. Oh, yeah. uh, we got 240 in the back, right. uh, 150 up front. Avon, Cobra Chromes, developed specifically for the Rocket. Uh, one great aspect about them is you'll hit your pegs before you hit the end of the traction on the tires themselves. Right, so right. it's nice and a little safety thing uh, okay. that we've kind of built in there a little bit. And this is, uh, what is the Euro spec? Uh, that means ABS, traction Talk, control. Talking about Euro 5? Oh, Euro 5. What is yeah, Euro 5? Yeah, so essentially it's just the way for, you know, not too long ago, Europeans had the Euro 4. It's just a matter of, you know, emissions, that sort right. of stuff to make sure that it's all together. Here, Euro 5 compliant for the states, you know, it's not necessarily you need to worry about, but what we do need to worry about is the fact that, in a, in a good way that is, um, the, the cat is hidden very uh, seductively, maybe, okay. in between uh, the headers. So you've got and a cat like but you've Absolutely. also got ABS. Mandarin ABS and traction control. Optimized cornering ABS, optimized okay. cornering traction control, all supported by an IMU we developed with Continental. Right. Um, what is so, that? Uh, inertial measurement unit. So basically, what you're having is it measures how the bike is is moving. Oh, so I am you is not some new age philosophy. Yeah, exactly. I exactly. am you. Oh, okay. no, I see. I got you. Right. We're all okay. one, right? That's what they say. Okay. <laughs> well, I know. I mean, bikes have become as complicated as cars now. I mean, you've got to you got to get your reader to plug in to find out mm. what's happening and all that kind of stuff, you know. But I and nobody does Chrome anymore. It. That's the one thing I do like about my Bonneville. It just has the classic. Triumph Chrome, mm. you know, from the 60s, you know. But it's a good looking bike. It'll come back eventually. Yeah. What other colors? Does this only come in red? <laughs> yeah, so uh, the R comes in what we call Corrosi Red and that Phantom Black right there. Right. And then the GT comes in the Phantom Black, but it also has this lovely combination of silver ice, oh, stone okay. gray, and a little piping that is Corrosi Red. So. Oh, does this come in red and black also? Yes. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I'll get it in black, yeah. Yeah, man, mean, vicious. I think the black would look nice. But, you know, I like my Bruffs and my Vincent, so I'm a sucker for black motorcycle. Looks good, looks okay. good. What else we got? I mean, God, that's a massive drive shaft. Well, you know, I mean, uh, that's a chunk of weight, isn't it? It's, Boy, that's, it's engineered yeah. to control, yeah, yeah. and it's engineered to, to hold up to the abuse or the love, depending on how you want to phrase it, right. that, uh, that our riders put under the bikes, and we want to be able to handle it. So I mean, you've got really, other than change oil, brake fluid, brake pads, tires, you really got nothing here. Every 10,000 miles, that's a service interval. After the first yeah. one, around 500, 600 miles, 10,000 miles, 10,000 miles like clockwork. Yeah. I've always told this story, but back in the 60s, going to the Triumph dealer, and the guy said to me, you don't have to take the head off till 7,500 miles. Oh. You don't have to take the engine apart till 7,500 <laughs> miles. Yeah. That's, yeah, and that was like, oh, that's pretty good. Because you never got that far, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's amazing how far it's come. I mean, 10,000 miles on a motorcycle used to be just, that was 100,000 miles on yeah. a car, you know. Where now it's it's almost it's exactly the same. You have that flexibility to ride as much or as little as you want. And what else have we got? Okay, and you've got, got different riding modes, yeah, right? Yes, so we you've have got... four riding modes. We have road, rain, right. sport, and rider configurable. Right. And you know, essentially, what's rider configurable? Rider configurable is, is if it, it works with the throttle and it works with trash control. So throttle map, trash control, um, and if you know, just consider road. Uh, you know, basic, nothing basic about it. Kind of like normal day-to-day -day riding. If you're heading up to the mountains, maybe to Rock Store, maybe to Mulholland, you put it on sport. Enjoy a little bit there uh, and if you want to do a mix of the two uh, that's what the rider's there for so you can if, you, if it's raining but you still want maybe a little better throttle control then you, know, you can kind of tinker with those two things but okay. ABS is always on now oh well how do you how do, so how do you ride a configure how do you yeah do okay let's see if we can turn this thing on right here now see here's what I was all set to complain about when I brought the bike mm -hmm. back the tachometer is right here and the tachometer needle is the exact same color and size as each marker so I as I'm riding, I, I can't read the tack. And I thought, all right, that, that's a sport bike. My eyes that bad, you know, I'm thinking. But you could, actually, you can change, you can configure the screen. Show me the screen that I like yeah, now. Absolutely, yeah. You just uh, press the home button on the right side of right. the stock here, and then uh, the first 
uh, one, two, three, four down, display set up. Right. And you click theme. Right. And switch right up to theme number one. Okay. And when you're done, home button right back there on the right. Okay, and okay, so up. now here's my tack, there's my speed. Fuel is right there. Yeah, that, that, uh, that's the screen I would be on most of the time. And similarly, if the dark doesn't suit you, there is uh, a way to make it a little bit brighter. So light, light dark, oh, that's nice. depending yeah, on what yeah. you want. So. Yeah, oh, I, I probably the dark works best, I think. Yeah, I go back to the dark, wow. yeah. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, oh, that's nice. Yeah, because that was driving me nuts. Because I'm going, and I'm saying, I'm like, oh, I, 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 you couldn't read it when it was, you know, because the needle was the same color. It was gray, just like everything else on it. So, yeah, that's a cool feature. And yeah, you can absolutely. get the heated grips on this too, right? The heated grips are absolutely an option on the R, yeah. standard on the GT. Yeah. Uh, similarly, both bikes have uh, cruise control standard, right. uh, all that good stuff, optimized cornering back and forth. The most impressive thing, and I mentioned this on the ride, were the mirrors. I, I, you know, years of riding bikes, you get over three grand. Is that a truck or a Volkswagen? Is that a guy in a bike behind? I, I mean, it's just doing this, you know. Rock steady. I mean, you could not tell if the bike was even running. I mean, that was the best part about it. And I'm not looking at my shoulders. I remember I had, yeah. a, I had a 70s MV yeah. Augusta. And I would go for a ride, and all I would see would be this shoulder. Like, do a little. So then I bought a new MV Augusta back in the 90s. Ah, oh, the new one. It, oh, look at my shoulder again. You know, it's the same thing. It's just, it just drove me crazy. So it's nice to see all those things. Well, you know, MV it, Augusta as well. Maybe they're built for a little smaller individual. And that's right. That, a that smaller could be individual. A potential, that's right. You know, not that's that right. I, not yeah, a big just, fat guy is what you're saying. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Not at all. So, no, they just done, done a wonderful job. And, and, of course, the most impressive thing is the build quality, you know. There's no weeping on any of the valve covers. We took it out for now. You don't bring it back and see little oil coming through. And nothing, you know. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just as important when you walk up to the bike and get the feeling that you're on something special. Um, you know, they say the bike, a good bike kind of melts away when you're on it, riding it, really getting into it. But at the same time, you want to get off that bike yeah, and walk I away mean, and look at it. Yeah, I mean, that's what's nice. I, it just... This is the easiest part right here. You can mm. do, I mean, it's 600 and something pounds. 640. Right, but three, yeah, two, but it's, it's, it's easy to maneuver. And side stand only, no center side stand. Side stand right, only. Yeah. But like I say, you can do this at a stoplight without falling over on the thing, you know? Yeah, I mean, again, removing that amount of weight from down there kind of helps it. We try and think about what the average wider would would one and one of those things is maneuverability right. in a bike like this so there you go i like the dual headlights leds leds right. front to back you know you got within the lights we have this wonderful triangle maker's mark uh from triumph so it's the little details that we try and put in everything yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no I, I i you know i'm so glad that triumph made it you know because they were the greatest bikes of the 30s 40s 50s 60s and the 70s and so many great machines came from japan and BMW got their act together, and when John Bloor took over, it was really great. It's, it's just unbelievable. I mean, he's, he's run the company now for what? Is it 30 years? At it's least? been a while, and now yeah. Nick's kind of at yeah. the helm yeah. now, yeah. and uh, yeah. you know, you make bikes that people want to ride, and they buy them. It's so that's great. what we try to it's do. Great. You know, that's right. You make a good product, and people flock to you. Oh, well, this is really good. Lance, thanks a lot. Hey. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, really nice. Really nice. Very impressive. So, yeah, I like this bike. Get it black. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>